In this video, I will show you every primary and secondary option at every position in the main slate on DraftKings in 5 minutes or less as teams begin to differentiate themselves as who can make a run for the big game and who will be left behind as Week 9 continues this Sunday. My name's Quick Pick Nick, and having compared every player's projection in DraftKings price, here are your primary picks for this weekend, November 8th, 2020. If you like this kind of fast-paced calculated content, subscribe and stay tuned for more lineups throughout the season, including an afternoon express slate tomorrow, as well as single game videos for Sunday and Monday Night Football. To start off this lineup with our primary quarterback, my model selected the former frontrunner for MVP who's aiming to get back into that conversation of the top QBs in the league, Josh Allen. After getting off to a very hot start, the Bills and Allen have somewhat cooled off since then, but the Bills are still winning, having only lost two games so far, and this success is due in large part to Allen. While Allen's accuracy and ability to put the ball where it needs to go might come into question at times, this big man is able to make plays out of the pocket that older veterans just can't. As a quarterback, in addition to two passing touchdowns per game, Allen is averaging half a rushing touchdown per game as well, complemented by a 7.25 rushing attempts per game. Against Seattle, Allen should be able to not only continue his rushing capabilities, but also expand upon his passing game, going up against the worst secondary in the league, allowing the most passing yards per game to opposing quarterbacks in the league. If you're not sold on the Bills Mafia though, and want to look elsewhere, a few secondaries include the Lions replacement for Matthew Stafford, whether it be Chase Daniel or David Blau, as they are both minimum cost players who will be able to score at least a dozen points with a capable offense depending on who gets the go-ahead by Coach Patricia, Russell Wilson, who's obviously an expensive choice, but also the only player averaging above 30 fantasy points per game, and Deshaun Watson, who's in the same price range as Allen on DraftKings, and has proven himself to a greater extent recently, scoring above 20 points in all of his past four contests. Moving on to the primary running backs, my model recommends a pair of Davids, David Johnson and David Montgomery. The Texans are utilizing Johnson to his fullest potential, which can only be expected after getting rid of the best wide receiver in the league. Johnson has only fallen below 10 fantasy points once this year, and has seen playtime both on the ground and through the air. Not that it should matter, as the Texans will likely be able to run the ball for the whole game against a falling apart Jacksonville team. Montgomery was chosen for the same reason he was chosen over the past two weeks in these lineup videos. Chicago needs Montgomery, and if the Bears want to run the ball at all, it'll be going through Montgomery. Tennessee certainly isn't a preferable matchup, but considering Montgomery's overall volume, he's well worth taking once also factoring in his low DraftKings cost. A few of the secondaries at the running back position that could also be swapped in include Matt Breida, who, if active, will replace Miles Gaskin in Miami as a minimum cost player, DeAndre Swift, another cheap option, seeing more playtime and overall opportunity in Detroit, and Justin Jackson, who was rather close to making the cut for primary as he has stepped up recently while Austin Eckler sits on IR, but doesn't have a favorable matchup with a stout Vegas defense. For the three primary wide receivers, my model found another pair of same names, Julio Jones and Marvin Jones Jr., alongside Tyler Lockett. Lockett was the most definitive lock in this entire lineup, as he has shown on multiple occasions his huge potential in Seattle. As one of Russell Wilson's favorite targets, Lockett is a very consistent option in PPR formats like DraftKings, where he's able to rack off reception points throughout any contest. He's much cheaper than I would have expected too, considering just a couple weeks ago, Lockett was targeted 20 times in one game, making for a historic 56 fantasy point night. Julio Jones is a primary due to the recent resurgence of his synergy with Matt Ryan, becoming more of a dependency for the older quarterback, being targeted 9 or 10 times in every game over the past 3 weeks. As for Marvin Jones, with Kenny Galladay doubtful for this contest, Jones will have a beautiful opportunity to take advantage of Minnesota's weak pass defense. If you don't believe in one or more of these guys though, alternative secondary picks include Marvin Hall or Danny Amendola, very cheap options who sit behind Marvin Jones on Detroit's depth chart but will also see bumps in production due to Galladay's absence, Keenan Allen who has seen his DraftKings price go up in recent weeks but is still a consistent option for Justin Herbert out in LA, and David Moore, another rising star in Seattle who takes the backseat to Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf but still has his moment scoring above 13 fantasy points three times this season which is relatively huge for just $3,100 on DraftKings. For the tight end, my model found Hunter Henry as the primary, given his uptick in usage recently as he looks more like his former self from years past. But if you're looking for replacement secondaries, check out Tyler Eifert, who might have a huge night contrasting his low $2,700 DraftKings cost, if active, or Jonu Smith, who is rather close to Henry in price, but just a different flavor if Henry gives you a bad taste. The tertiary at flex for this lineup is Josh Jacobs, as although he has shown great promise recently, recording 31 at attempts on the ground against Cleveland last week, the Chargers may prove to be a greater challenge. The primary defense my model picked was the Lions, as they're actually starting to win games over there in Detroit, and this is a great spot to save considering Minnesota probably won't prove too threatening to, well, anybody. That's what my model was able to come up with for the primary picks for the main slate on DraftKings this Sunday, November 8th, 2020. This has been Quick Pick Nick, the intersection for sports, data analysis, and speed. Thanks for watching.